now we're going to move on to the next part, which is ideation. So this part is more creative, it's a little bit more fun, also high pressure. So ideation is really a process of coming with as many ideas as possible in the given amount of time. So when we talk about ideation, really quantity is more important than quality. One big mistake that a lot of people do is in this process, they try to think of the perfect solution and they try to add different things up to that solution. But that's really not the best approach. At this point, we're trying to diversify our ideas to ask ourselves, how else can I solve this? How else can this be done? To think kind of beyond the most obvious solutions. So this is why quantity is really more important than quality at this step. So coming up with as many ideas as possible without overthinking, without judging the ideas, without telling yourself, oh, but this is not possible, it's not realistic. It doesn't matter at this point, okay? It doesn't matter if it's realistic or not. The most important is to write down all everything that comes to your mind. Second, be visual. So many times we use sketching when we do ideation because this really helps you capture your thoughts into a picture. So let's say if I tell you think of a tree, the way a tree appears now in your, in your mind is completely different than I think of a tree, okay? So this is why we try to sort of sketch. So if you say an app that connects different things, I suggest or I recommend to try to sketch that somehow if you have the possibility. If not, you can still write, you know, descriptions at this point because sketching also takes practice, but try to be visual, try to use as little words as possible. Keep the insights about your user in mind. So we did everything for a purpose, asking questions uh, to your user. We really try to understand what makes their travel planning experience good or bad. So in your solution, you have to consider all those insights because you ask questions for a reason. Don't be critical at this point. So as I said, this is not the time to judge the ideas. This is really the time to um, give, give free space to your mind to be creative and to think outside the box. And finally, crazy ideas are good. The crazier, the better. Why? And also, this is not just for today's purpose, but in general, when you come up with really wild ideas that seem unrealistic, this is when innovation happens. If you think 100 years back, no one thought that we would have smartphones and we would have everything at our fingertips. Only 20 years ago, Facebook was non-existent and people were not even thinking that this is possible. And today we have this. Why? Because people thought outside the box. They did the impossible basically, okay? So really try to think of big ideas. It's easier to take a crazy idea and try to make it realistic than just have a really mediocre, uh, unauthentic idea. Okay, so in, in your papers, uh, we have the ideation stage. So the idea here is that first write down your statement here. So your statement from before of my user needs this because this. So you write it down here on the top. Why? Because it's important to remember what exactly you're solving. This is a big mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs do. They forget the problem that they're solving and they just have start having a lot of ideas that don't make any sense and have no reasoning behind it. So that's why we put the problem at the top to never forget what we're solving. This is your kind of guideline. This is your beacon that guides you through your ideation process. And then you come up with five ideas. So, so usually in the ideation process, let's say I would give you five minutes and you write down on post-its as many ideas as possible. For the sake of today's process, we're gonna limit it to five. You will see that in four minutes, it's difficult to come up with five ideas shortly. Uh, but as I said, focus on quantity. Don't try to make five perfect ideas. Just have five different ideas for the problem statement here. Okay, again, this is individual work. So don't talk with your partner at this point. This is you trying to identify different solutions. So everyone is gonna get four minutes to come up with five different solutions for your chosen challenge. So I'm gonna start the timer, four minutes, okay? So time starts now. Again, try to be visual if possible.
two minutes left. For the people who are really fast and already have five ideas, try to ask yourself, how can I visualize it? And try to make a sketch. Ten seconds left. Okay, time is up. Okay, so now you came up with five different ideas of how you could solve the problem or how you could meet the need of your target group of, or your partner in this case. So what we're going to do next is actually take one step back. Why? Because as I said, design thinking is not a linear process. So we won't jump down and just build our solution, but we're going to take one step back to go back to our user and ask them which solution or which idea they find the most promising. It meets their needs. So we are actually going to go back and interview our partner, show them our five ideas and get feedback about which kind of idea they should go with. So usually what happens in startups is that uh, or entrepreneurs that don't really apply design thinking and think they know the best, what happens usually is they come up with a few ideas and then they're like, okay, let's just build this one because I think this is the best. Um, but as, as we learned from all the, all the facts that I gave you about, you know, having bigger return on investment, saving costs, at this point when you have several options is the time to go back to your user, to your target group and ask them the critical question of which idea is the best. Now, everyone is gonna get three minutes again where partner one asks partner two. So you will pitch your ideas or you will share the ideas that you came up with. And then partner two is gonna give feedback. One important thing that I want you guys to remember is don't ask, do you like this? Or which idea do you like? When you ask people if they like something, you will never receive accurate answers. Many times when you show a prototype or your product to a customer and you ask them, what do you think about this? They will tell you, yeah, it's nice, it's okay, because they don't wanna hurt your feelings. But actually, would they use it? Probably not. So one way to do this is to really share your ideas and ask them, does, would, which idea would solve their problem? Which idea they think that they would need the most? So try to avoid questions of, um, you know, do you like it? Would you use it? Would you buy it? Because that never gives accurate answers. So the best way to do this is show your or communicate your four ideas and then just ask your partner, what do you think about this? Which direction is, is best suitable to solve your problem? Okay. So everyone gets three minutes. First partner one is going to share with partner two and then we switch roles. Everyone gets three minutes and partner one now has starts uh, his or her time. So the time starts now for partner one.
Don't forget to write notes. Guys, don't forget to write notes in the, in the section. So write notes. Now, please switch your partners, um, share your ideas and give feedback. You have three minutes for that.
Okay, time is up. Time is up. Okay, can we move on? Okay, so now you had three conversations with your target group or your partner. After three conversations, you have to know your partner pretty well in terms of what they need and what they expect from a good travel planning experience. So now we're gonna try to build the final solution. So you received some feedback on the five different solutions. Maybe your partner completely liked one direction and you should basically develop that. Or maybe he liked different parts of different solutions and now you have the chance to build your final solution with different parts. Um, so we're gonna spend uh, four minutes in building the final solution. So you have a lot of space. What I recommend is to create a storyboard. So a story, a story guys, please listen, otherwise you're gonna be confused about what's happening, okay? I'm only gonna speak once. So in, in this space, you can create a storyboard. So a storyboard is basically a sequence of events happening. So if you think of a movie, if you would take a screenshot of every single part of that movie, you would have a storyboard. So that's what we're trying to create here. Imagine your final solution in three scenes. So let's say that I want to visualize um, buying um, clothes online, for example. Then what I would visualize first, the landing page of the e-commerce website. Second step would be browsing through different things. And third step would be to put it in my basket and pay. So within your final solution, try to identify three key steps that your target group has to take and try to visualize it in three scenes. So you can use three post-its, one, two, three, and make it as visual as possible because you're gonna get feedback, uh, you're gonna receive feedback again from your users. So they have to understand what exactly you are doing. So try to make it as visual as possible and use as little words as possible, if possible if possible. Um, so again, keep in mind what you learned from your user, keep in mind the feedback you received in the last round, and now we're trying to build kind of your final solution that you want to continue with. Is everything clear? You guys are not asking any questions, so I cannot know. If you don't ask any questions, I assume everything is 100% clear. You know what you have to do, you don't have any questions, everything's perfect. Is that correct? Okay, <laughs> that's good. Um, so, four minutes, so here's three minutes, but because I want you to do the storyboard, so one, two, three, I'm gonna give four minutes to build um, the final solution, okay? So this is your kind of baby project, the, the final thing uh, that you built. So I'm gonna start a four minute timer. Again, it's individual work, so no communication now. Start. Yes, one question coming. What is your solution? Okay, so there is a question. I'm, I'm talking with the remote people now, so, sorry. So there is a question about which part of the solution you're supposed to build right now. So if you have a platform, think about the three key steps in that platform that your user has to go through. So is the user experience interacting with your product? This has nothing to do with your business model. This has nothing to do with money at this point. This is just about the experience. So if you have a platform, what are three screenshots in that platform? that will let your user or your partner understand what is the solution about. Let's say if you have a platform and you make a storyboard with three screens, one screen is login or sign up, and then you put your email and then you sign up. Then from that, the only solution that I understand is that I signed up. I don't know what happened. So try to find three key points in your experience. If you don't have a platform, but you have a service, or experience, try to visualize it. You can draw little people doing certain things and 
write down some notes that this is happening, right? So try to make it as understandable as possible. Any other questions? Okay, so four minutes starts now.
Okay, so time is up now. Has everyone managed to sketch the final solution? More or less. Okay, so here was an interesting case that I actually want to share with you uh, because you might come across this a lot when you do design thinking. So in this group's case, there was no problem. So the partner didn't have any problem with planning the travel experience. Uh, from the empathy session, she understands that when last time he planned the travel experience, they called with a friend and then they thought of different destinations and then they decided based on three criteria, money, time to get there and what was there? Distance. distance. So distance to get there. So three criteria. And in this case, the partner didn't explicitly say that he has a problem. He actually didn't have any problem. So what do you do in this case? You can actually um, kind of, um, how do you, I cannot find the word. Uh, so, yeah, so basically you can improve that experience because when she said that, that they planned together, I thought of that there's no currently, there's no platform where you can plan together. You always look up yourself and then another person is looking and then you call each other and then you try to decide. But what if there would be a platform where together with your friends, you can create a bucket list of places and then add different places and then you can filter them on those three criteria that she just mentioned. Money, time to go there and distance. For example, even in normal traveling platforms, those three criteria are not there at the same time. So maybe you can filter destinations through that. So in this case, what you could do is recreate that experience in a new platform and then come to him and say, hey, this is the platform that I built that could help you find the perfect destination with your friends. Would you buy it? Would you pay for this? Things like that, okay? So this is an interesting case and this could happen a lot in, in a real life scenario as well. So what we're gonna do next is, um, prototype. We're actually going to skip this part because you already created a storyboard, but there are many online prototyping tools out there. I think in one of the pages, there is a QR code. So the QR code here leads you actually to an app called the Marvel app that allows you to do prototypes online for applications. So now we don't have to go, now we don't have time to do this, but I suggest that at home you actually check it out and maybe use it in your own projects because it's a really cool tool to visualize and create prototypes of your solutions. So what we're gonna do next, so we're gonna skip step eight, but we're gonna do step nine. So now we're gonna take turns again. Partner one will share the final solution with partner two for four minutes and gather feedback in this format. What worked? So what really works in the solution? What do they like? What could be improved in the solution? What kind of new questions they have? So when they ask you, how would this work? What does this feature do? Why is this here? You write those questions down because they are important to help you iterate again in the next round. And then new ideas. So this is again kind of gaining empathy with your user because you gain another level of understanding. You receive more feedback from your user of what they like, and this can help you gather new ideas about what you can improve in the future. So we're gonna take four minutes, so not five, but four minutes each. So partner one shares final solution with partner B, captures feedback in this format, and then we switch roles, okay? Is that clear for everybody? Okay. So, <clears throat> partner one starts uh, sharing with partner two, starting now.
Okay, time is up. Please switch partners for another three and a half minutes. Okay, so this was the final stage that we're gonna do in this exercise. If we had a little bit more time, we would actually build a prototype and have a little bit more extended, um, but because we have very limited, uh, very, very limited time left, I'm gonna try to rush through the, the rest uh, of the workshop.